Hey everybody, first off, I just wanna apologize for not posting last week. Being a full-time doctorate student, as well as running an online private studio can sometimes be a lot. So I'll upload videos when I get the chance, but don't worry, uh, I'm still here. Now in today's video, I wanna cover a topic that is often overlooked when people are practicing and trying to get better at improvisation, and that is time feel. Let's talk about it right now. Okay, so let's say that you're practicing your scales, your arpeggios, your chords, and your transcribing solos, but whenever you go to improvise or play anything, it just seems really hard for it to feel good or for it to feel like it's locked in. A lot of times, students, whenever they go to play a solo, will play really good ideas, but it never sounds quite right and they don't understand what's wrong. I was once told by my mentor, Randy Napoleon, that a good soloist can center the band's time around their own time feel. A great example is Sonny Stitt. When he plays, the band has no choice but to swing along with his amazing eighth note feel. So how do we develop good time feel then? Let me give you a couple exercises that'll help. Well, the first thing that you need is a metronome. Yep, everyone's worst enemy, the metronome. And the metronome app that I use is Pro Metronome. Just in case you're wondering, not sponsored, I just really like them. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your metronome or your metronome app and you're gonna wanna make it where it accents just one. And then after you do that, you're gonna wanna clap along with it. When you're doing this, try to be as picky as possible and try to clap exactly when the metronome happens. Then once you feel comfortable with doing that, Try only clapping on beats two, or maybe clapping on beat four. Now, here's where you can really test yourself. Make the metronome only play on beat one, and do the same exercise as before. Again, starting with clapping just all the chord notes, and then picking a chord note out from that to clap. It's a lot harder than it looks. Now let's apply this to our guitar. So I want you to do this exact same exercise with your guitar, but now we're gonna mute the strings and we're gonna chug every quarter note and we're gonna accent the chord notes two and four, much like how Freddie Green would play, but we're just gonna exclude any chords or notes and just work on the time feel. So make sure to do this until you feel really locked in into whatever tempo you're practicing. I would start with tempos ranging from 110 beats per minute to 140 beats per minute to start off with. Right now I'm practicing at 110 beats per minute. All right, so now let's play some lines. All right, so you practice clapping with the metronome and chugging your chord notes on the guitar. Now let's get some eighth notes together. For this exercise, we're just gonna use the B flat major bebop scale. <laughs> Now I want you to put the metronome just on one, and then I want you to play this scale going up in eighth notes and going down in eighth notes. When you're doing this, try to have a consistent eighth note feel. What I would do is I would recommend singing your eighth note feel before you even attempting this. And then make sure that when you're doing it, you can consistently sing that same eighth note swing feel at whatever tempo you're practicing. Remember that we're focusing more on time feel rather than notes. Now do the same thing, but have the metronome play on two instead of one. So as you can see, you can put this on any beat and do this exercise. You could put it on beats three or even beat four. And if you really wanna challenge yourself, try putting it on the end of a beat, like the and of two, for instance. All right, so now that you practice your quarter note and eighth note feels, let's try to apply everything that we learned over a couple etudes I wrote over a blues. When playing these etudes, try playing it with the metronome just on one, and then move it to other beats like two, three, or four.
If you constantly work on your time feel this way, you will develop a strong quarter note feel in turn, which will develop a strong eighth note feel. And when you play solos, people are really gonna notice that. You'll be like Sonny Stitt. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about how to develop a good quarter note feel. If you're interested in talking to me more about this concept or any other jazz concept, and you just wanna have a Zoom lesson, make sure to send me an email through my website in the video description below. Also, just a reminder that I have a new single, an unreleased B-side from my debut album, Each Step. So if you want to check that out, that's also going to be in the video description below. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And remember to always keep swinging.